So, I guess I have to um, clarify uh, statements to Truth Convoy. Now, you see, I'm not going to call her Matau, I'm going to call her Denise. And uh, she needs to understand the full story. What I sent her in an email, I'm happy to make public. Um, I was trying to give her a history. And uh, we're not going to mention the certain person that she's mentioning. We're not going to mention two people. But what I will say is uh, a certain Carson City resident uh, did more than uh, try to locate me for a Floridian uh, resident. The person who now lives in Carson City uh, put out a Bitcoin bounty uh, and used the words capture. Now, you know, rhetoric and verbiage is very important uh, in legal matters. And if I wanted to pursue this certain Carson City person, um, I would have. It was a fluid situation, and it still remains a fluid situation, but I do appreciate um, <laughs> communicating <laughs> with uh, Denise. And look, uh, she's wrong about a lot of things. Her interpretation is um, suspicious. And um, I can understand that. She accused me at one point of being a terrorist uh, who had his eyes on Port Natchez and, uh, you know, Port of Charleston. That's not true. Uh, that was in her head. However, uh, she is right about uh, this Birmingham fellow and with uh, what she calls the Hassanites, uh, which is very true because uh, Hassan is a admitted friend of Jim Stewartson and is tied to John Cipher, who, as I've repeatedly explained, is a 28-year veteran of the Central Intelligence Agency. He was a um, pretty high-level case officer, you know, SIS level, uh, for those in the know. So, uh, yeah, I got a, <laughs> I got a missive from a friend of mine who said that a certain person in Carson City is being loaded up with guns, including semi-automatic, you know, a AR-15s, uh, and that the person behind it is a guy named Glenn Herman of MAGA Coalition, who incidentally happens to be in Utah today. Now, I'm headed back to California for a bit, but, uh, you know, I don't think that uh, there was uh, anything wrong with what I uh, sent to these, and... Uh, I'm happy to send the same email to anybody who re requests it, and they can take a look at the content themselves. Um, what's really happening is the world <laughs> is falling apart, and um, I think the police have their hands filled and their resources are stretched, and we've got 30% of the Democrats who think that the election uh, was rigged and was flawed, and we've got 80% of uh, the Republicans feeling the same way. 81% actually from uh, polls, if you can trust polls. Uh, so, no, my concern uh, with the Carson City resident is uh, not only a concern for uh, his personal safety, because, you know, he doesn't know how to shoot, but also for um, other people. Let's say that he is being programmed by uh, people, and he has uh, come out swinging <laughs> repeatedly against someone in uh, in Florida. Uh, sure, there's a concern for for safety. You know, I don't want to see uh, the Carson City person um, uh, physically hurt or physically hurt anybody. That's the way I, I feel. Uh, so that's that, and I'm trying to do the right thing. I I. I find it odd that uh, Denise uh, finds it suspicious that I would be concerned about uh, someone who doesn't know how to shoot, um, you know, suddenly having access to guns. And uh, we all know um, that uh, th this type of situation is one that could lead to uh, unintended violence or intended violence. And so. I'm not letting uh, whatever my personal feelings about Mr. Carson City uh, are uh, get in the way of uh, me trying to actually 
uh, once again, do the right thing. So, uh, doesn't sound like the actions of someone who would be plotting to uh, blow up a port or anything. Um, look, you know, I think that uh, that Denise likes to to fill the role of me as a friendly adversary. <laughs> you know, the Red Baron, right? Uh, I'm just trying to get along and make music and uh, trying to do the right thing at all times. And that's that. So it's not a game. Um, I don't know who Brian Birmingham is. Uh, I don't know who a lot of the, I don't know who Roy Potter is. I don't know much about the uh, LeBaron um, uh, Mormons other than I think a family was killed in Mexico a while ago and they did a story on it. I'm much more concerned right now with um, tying in the Manson family killings, the CIA, Michael Aquino, and uh, the Santa Rosa hitchhiking uh, murders, and um, the Zodiac. So let's talk about the Zodiac. The 340 cipher I figured out a while ago with my friend, uh, a professor from Columbia, a man named uh, Thomas Horan. And basically, uh, a certain person uh, named Al Snook, S-N-O-O-K, um, was working with OSS in the Philippines. And there was a training manual. This is where he first learned um, to be a crypto guy. And um, literally learned and then trained. Uh, this was in 42, 43. In 44, he was injured. Uh, he ended up receiving four bronze stars uh, and a purple heart, by the way. Uh, and came back and went into law enforcement and um, became a sergeant with the Napa Police Department. And uh, he was the guy who fingerprinted uh, the Carmen Ghia, uh, the, um, uh, the, the uh, two victims. One of the victims had a Carmen Ghia. I think it was Cecilia Shepard for the 1969 uh, Zodiac killings. And I remember that. I was a kid. And I remember reading that in the paper. Uh, it was, um, it was horrible. And what's funny is I ended up moving to Napa and I would go up to, Bar to Berryessa to that exact spot. I went to Partrick Road. Uh, I studied this thing. I got a lot of blowback from uh, looking at Napa and investigating and making connections. And as far as uh, Michael Aquino, everybody knows that I had a uh, interview on uh, Lepo's show back in August of 2019, a month before Aquino died. And I asked him uh, straight up, was the government involved in any way, shape or form with Charlie Manson and uh, the murders that later ensued? And the answer I got was good. He admitted it. He said at the very beginning. And you have to look at Haight-Ashbury and you have to look at the clinic uh, there, which is a very famous uh, free clinic and in that free clinic was um, Charlie Manson's parole officer. So there's been a lot of work. Um, my friend David McGowan is dead right now, but we were working on some things together. I'm, I'm working with uh, a professor right now back east, uh, putting everything together. We've been doing this for five years and we've made a lot of connections. And so with the 340 Cypher, we had it figured out um, a couple years ago. and you're now reading that the 340 cipher has been completely figured out. No, uh, <laughs> you guys got about half of it. There's a lot more and uh, you're going to have to consult a certain uh, Philippines uh, training manual. And if you go to the, um, well, just start to Google around to the Philippine uh, uh, Eagle veterans um, website and you'll see what I'm talking about. So, Going back to Denise Matau, I don't hate you, Denise. I think you've misinterpreted uh, some of what I've said. Uh, you know, just making it clear. I'm not, um, I'm not going to engage with you in a negative way. If you want to be positive, my door is open. Uh, that's that. And by the way, um, I'm going to challenge you. How, how about you call me Thomas instead of my last name all the time? I don't call you Matau anymore. I call you Denise. So... Let's have some dente for the uh, Christmas season. What do you say?